Uh, tell us about your family. My wife is a psychologist. She's uh, one of her interests actually is is reading, uh, but also just child development, both intellectually and emotionally. We have a lot of interesting discussions because she's understanding human development in the psychological realm, and uh, I'm trying to study the same topic, but to understand it in quantifiable terms so that we can recreate aspects of human intelligence. Uh, but she's a wonderful child therapist uh, and has done a number of creative projects uh, in that area. Uh, she and my daughter actually wrote a book together, which you're holding. Uh, my daughter is an avid dancer, choreographer, a, a, a sophomore at Stanford, uh, and writer. And she and my daughter, uh, my wife and my daughter wrote uh, this book, uh, Forever Poems for Now and Then, together. And then my son is a student at Harvard Business School. He went to Stanford also, worked at McKinsey for a few years, and is quite passionate about uh, technology business. Do they share your beliefs about the future of technology? I, I would say uh, yes. Uh, my, my kids definitely have their outlook shaped by this perspective. Uh, you commonly run into this very common paradigm of, uh, well, human life is only, you know, three score and 20, and we're going to slow down at 65. And the, 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 the sort of common conception of the life cycle of humans and that, I, I would say that's not my kids' perspective at all. Uh, so that my wife and my kids definitely are immersed in my ideas. My wife is uh, fortunately very healthy, but she's also conscious about her health. Manhattan Beach, California, good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Steve Spann, and thank you, Dr. Kurzweil. I have several questions. I'll rattle them off quickly. Uh, do you believe in God, or do you think man is God? And if man is God, what happened before the Big Bang? Or possibly, is man part of God? And beyond that, uh, what do you think of string theory, and do you think, what do you think of parallel universes? That'll do it for now. Okay. I actually talk about those topics quite a bit in Chapter 6 and 7 of my book. Uh, 6 on string theory and parallel universes, and Chapter 7 on philosophy, spirituality, God, and so on. Uh, I mentioned earlier a conception of evolution as a spiritual process. At least that's what we see in, in evolution. Uh, as entities evolve, as, as they evolve through biological evolution, and we see this now continuing in technological evolution, they become more complicated, more complex, more intelligent, more creative, and actually more beautiful, more capable of expressing higher level emotions. We don't see that, for example, in lower animals. So expressions like love and, or even being funny, and things that are uniquely human, uh, are, are things that happen more and more as, as entities evolve. And we're going to actually expand that through this uh, expansion of human intelligence with our technology. So through evolution, we're becoming more godlike, never really reaching that ideal, because God is uh, expressed as infinite, all-knowing, infinitely intelligent. Well, we're not going to become infinite. Uh, evolution stays finite, but it explodes exponentially, so it's moving in that direction. Uh, that's as close as I can get to, to this conception. I think, though, that we will saturate the matter and energy in our, in our part of the universe, our solar system. Uh, actually, not, it won't take that long. It'll take about a century uh, for us to saturate the ability of matter and energy to support computation and communication in, in our little part of the universe, and then spread out to the rest of the universe. And I see, ultimately, the universe being transformed into uh, an intelligent civilization that spans a galaxy and, and multiple galaxies, and ultimately the whole universe. And, this and so the whole universe will wake up. That'll seem pretty godlike from our very limited perspective today. So you could say that the universe will wake up, will become conscious. Uh, there will be a god. Uh, at least that satisfies my need for a God to have the entire universe wake up. Uh, I'd like to be around to see that. That's one reason I'm interested in Bridge One uh, on this road to radical life extension. And this does get to the parallel universes because uh, you might ask, how did our universe be so bio-friendly? I just wrote a forward to Jim Gardner's new book, Intelligent Universes, where he spends a whole book addressing this, and I talk about it uh, 
in uh, chapter six of Singularity is Near, uh, if you look at the standard model of physics, there's about 50 different constants and values that are set very precisely to values to allow atoms to exist and molecules and therefore stars and planets and that allowed biological evolution to take place and if certain constants, the Planck constant and uh, other constants in, in the standard model of physics were set just slightly differently, uh, there would have been no evolution and no uh, biology and no intelligence. So, so how did that happen? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, some people say, well, it's an intelligent design. There must have been an intelligent designer. Uh, that may be the case. The intelligent designer, though, could be a, an intelligent entity in some other universe. String theory does allow multiple universes because there are multiple solutions to the formulas of string theory uh, that, that does allow for multiple universes, each actually with different laws of physics. And it may be, have been an evolutionary process that the universes get better and better designed as one universe begets another. And it could have been just a, been a natural evolutionary process or it could actually be an intelligent uh, entity, some evolved intelligence in another uh, universe actually creates using some very advanced technology a new universe and perhaps it created our universe. Uh, I speculated in the forward to this book that maybe our universe is a junior high school science experiment of, of uh, some adolescent superintelligence in another universe. But uh, we are left with the fact that our universe has a set of physical laws which are remarkably fine-tuned to allow this evolution of complexity that we saw in biological and, and uh, technological evolution. We have an emailer who asked, could you speak to the political and religious anti-reactions to science? Well, there is this accelerating pace of change. I mean, I mentioned that ex uh, tech information technology is growing exponentially, doubling in its power every year. The paradigm shift rate, the rate of progress, is also accelerating, basically doubling every decade. And you can really feel that now. I mean, you go back five years and there was no social networks, no blogs, no podcasts. People were just starting to use search engines. That sounds like ancient history, and that's only five years ago. And so. Things are happening fast and fast. And by the way, that's not intuitive. Uh, when I gave a presentation at Time Magazine's Future of Life conference on the 50th anniversary of the discovery of structure of DNA, all of us speakers were asked, what will the next 50 years bring? And all the speakers there, except actually for Bill Joy and myself, use the last 50 years as a model for the next 50 years. But that's not accurate because we'll see 32 times more progress in the next 50 years <coughs> because of this acceleration. And this backlash actually, I think, is from the increased anxiety that this accelerating pace of change fosters. Uh, I think this rise of fundamentalism is a reaction to this accelerating pace of change. And it is a fundamentally <coughs> a fundamental problem uh, because of the increasing potential for asymmetric warfare, this empowerment of the individual which can empower an individual to be creative. So one you know, kid at Stanford can create something that's worth billions of dollars, and you know, a couple of kids can create a movie uh, that rivals Hollywood studios. Uh, a bioterrorist can also create a very dangerous you know, bioweapon with these same tools and same knowledge. And uh, if you have a rise of fundamentalism defining humans the way they were in the seventh century, the third century, thirteenth century, and having a you know, violent reaction to trying to uh, continue the advance of progress uh, combined with these uh, potential for asymmetric uh, warfare, that, that's a serious challenge. And I think that's actually the fundamental or primary challenge that we face uh, as we go forward. What do you think about the President's approach to science funding? Well, I mean, I, I said before that I support uh, unrestricted pursuit of stem cell research, and, and I think uh, that's a very unfortunate that we have these restrictions. I, I don't think, however, it's having a huge effect because stem cell research is, is progressing quite rapidly. And in fact, what we really want to do is take my skin cells and turn them into pluripotent cells that can create any uh, organ or, or type of cell with my own DNA. Uh, it's called transdifferentiation. It's really the holy grail of, of uh, cell engineering. Uh, these oppositions tend to be stones in the river, but they're unfortunate stones. And 
and it does slow certain things down, which uh, I think overall science funding has not gone down. I mean, if you look at the statistics, funding of science uh, through the government and, and through the corporate sector has uh, you know, continued its historical growth rates. Uh, we don't, and, uh, and it is doing remarkable things, but that's not a, really a policy of a Democratic or Republican administration. I mean, it has kind of a life of its own. And uh, when I was at NA National Institutes of Health a few weeks ago and sharing ideas with the directors uh, and the chief scientists, uh, there's some very remarkable things happening now. Now that we have these you know, increasingly powerful tools, uh, remarkable databases, uh, very powerful tools to be able to reverse engineer genes and see their impact as proteins and be able to relate gene states to disease states with this million genome project that's coming and many other things. So uh, I'm not dissatisfied overall with science funding. I think we should keep politics out of it. Uh, however, I'm not alarmed that it's uh, significantly distorting progress. And progress isn't just from the government. I mean, we have many billions of dollars of corporate funding. Uh, and we get from here to there, not with some grand leap to, let's say, create human level intelligence. We get there actually 100 steps through 100 steps. Each one is small, market driven. The market wants a little bit more intelligent search engine, a more flexible operating system. And all these little steps, if you add them all up and they, and they get to be faster and faster, uh, end up getting us to very remarkable places in, in fairly short order. Idaho Falls, Idaho. Good, 